You're welcome. According to data available to us, over 400 post-election disputes have been filed in various courts across the country, uh, challenging the results of the presidential the governorship, the National Assembly, and the State Assembly election. Some of these disputes have been resolved. Some others are still pending. Uh, but with conflicting judgments being delivered by a different course of courts across the country, the conversation has been about whether Nigeria's judiciary is truly delivering justice and whether the courts are still the last hope of the common man. Now, to bring some context to this, let's uh, go down memory lane to look at some past elections, uh, election cases. 1999. Falaye versus Obasanjo, following Nigeria's return to democracy in 1999, the country held its first presidential elections, uh, inaugural elections of the Fourth Republic on February 27, 1999, or Obasanjo of the People's Democratic Party before he tore his membership card, defeating Lenu Falaye of the Alliance for Democracy and All People's Party joint ticket. I'm sure you remember that one. Faye was unhappy with the results, and he went ahead to file a suit at the Court of Appeal in Abuja and lost. Remember that Justice Dahiru Mustafa, the living judgment, found that, quote, the petition lacks merit and ought to be dismissed, end of quote. Let's go to 2003, Buhari versus Obasanjo. The All Nigeria People's Party's presidential candidate at the time, Muhammad Buhari, contested against um, President Obasanjo's re-election, asking the court to declare Obasanjo's re-election unconstitutional due to his alleged corruption, disregard for the Electoral Act 2002, as it was then known, and lack of eligibility to run for office at the time of the election. But Buhari lost at the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal in Abuja and at the Supreme Court. 2007, Buhari and Atiku versus Yaradoa. President Yaradoa, at the time candidate, he won a fiercely contested election, which observers said fell short of international standards. Atiku and Buhari disputed that election in court, and the Supreme Court ultimately confirmed or affirmed Yadwa's victory at the polls, a victory from an election he himself, Yadwa, admitted had shortcomings. Those were his words. He said that the election had shortcomings, and he promised electoral reforms to correct the system. Now, this particular election is widely described amongst us one of the worst in Nigeria's history amongst those in the political and uh, analytical circles, and often used as a benchmark, the 2007 election, for what elections should not be. It's often described as Morrissey Rules election. We can describe it as the Osu of elections in Nigeria. Pardon the use of that term. And it was presided over by Morrissey Rules and Anik Chairman. In fact, the 2007 elections were so flawed that the European Parliament suspended a 500 million US dollar financial aid to Nigeria until new elections were held. At that time, a lot of money, still a lot of money. Now, it was that bad. It was that bad. But Yadwa's victory was sealed by the Supreme Court. So is there something they saw that the others who said the election was flawed didn't see? Question I guess we'll answer tonight. 2011. Buhari versus Jonathan. Now, Buhari, then of the Congress for Progressive Change, he was a nominee, failed to overturn President Gulag Jonathan's victory at the Supreme Court. Let's go to 2019, Atiku versus Buhari. The Court of Appeal upheld Buhari's re election, and the Supreme Court decided unanimously that Atiku's case was without merit. Now, in all of these cases, there's a connecting dot. The losing candidates, and indeed political analysts, had something to say about the judgments and the verdicts. And of course, in 2023, the recently concluded elections, Obi and Atiku, they went all the way to the Supreme Court. I think the APM withdrew their case. After losing to Bola Bichinubu, these two individuals and their parties, uh, laws losing at the petition and appeal stages, they had scathing assessments of the judicial decisions. Atiku himself was asked some months ago what his next step would be if he lost at the Supreme Court, and his response was that he would appeal to God. Well, is it yet time for Nigerians to join him, Atiku Abubakar, in seeking divine intervention, and is Nigeria at a crossroads where its temple 
of justice needs salvation. It's a question our guests will have to answer tonight. Joining us for a conversation on seeking justice in Nigeria's judiciary, we have Senator Shiro Sani, former lawmaker. We have Dr. Adeto Kumbo Pierce, uh, convener, reset Lagos PDP. We also have uh, Falari Mo Aluko, he is a member of the National Executive Council of the Nigeria Bar Association. Gentlemen, it's a pleasure to have you tonight. Um, let's let's go over to Senator Shane Sally, who's joining us uh, via video link. Um, Senator, how, how do you feel about the performance of the judiciary? You've been in the arena. Um, uh, how do you feel about the performance of the judiciary in handling the election petitions in the 2023 elections, um, general elections? Um, do you think the judiciary has been fair, has been impartial and independent, or do you have any concerns or complaints about their conduct? Thank you very much for having me. Well, um, as the democratic system is, it was expected that when an election is conducted, when people felt disenfranchised or the election appears not to be free, fair, credible, and transparent, or in cases where uh, infractions or violations were rigid. Uh, our democracy made it possible for people to seek redress to our expectations were that the judiciary will correct the wrongs uh, done during the elections and ensure justice is done. The uh, order of arrangement is such a way that uh, people who read elections will not be given the opportunity to win when they are focused with the challenge. Uh, it has been the case to the restoration of democracy in the United States. Uh, elections have been challenged in court. But this time around, the expectations from most Nigerians was that our democracy has reached a certain point, that our judicial system should play the role of a just umpire when it comes to the issue of the region of elections and other uh, fraudulent acts. But we have seen cases where, on technical reasons, or oh, for some reasons which are uh, appears to be magical, that people speak with in the elections were either snatched or uh, where the judiciary was used as uh, a platform uh, to favor a certain political party. Uh, what has happened in the last few months raised a lot of dust and doubt in the heart of my of Nigeria on the impartiality of the judiciary. Uh, in most cases, for example, what has happened in the uh, as far as the case of Kano and Plato are concerned. You have some states where the same judiciary will throw away a case on the day that it's a election matter or it is an uh, internal party affair. And in some cases, it will be uh, to the contrary. So it, reach, it has reached a point to be people, even the most modern of all men, cannot, with certainty of law, tell me this is where the judgment will say. Because what is being declared not and void to be, by the same court tomorrow, will be upheld. And the point is, when people go to court, is that they are doing what the Constitution and the law say. We are seen in 2011, where, where after, after elections were declared, there was pandemonium in the country and hundreds of people lost their lives. We have seen what happened in Kenya, the post election violence that led to the interest of International Court of Justice. 
Now, this time around, the blessings of our democracy is that the major players, the major presidential candidates, sign an accord to be orderly and be peaceful and respect the outcome of the elections. When the election was announced and the winner emerged from the presidential level, the two presidential candidates did the needful. They didn't call their supporters to come to the street and unleash violence. They went to court. And the same thing that happens in most of the states. But instead of the court to concentrate and to prioritize on the issues of the elections, in most cases you see contradictions in terms of judgment as of what is and what is not. Now, when people lose hope in the judiciary, it only gives them the opportunity to take the law into their hands. It has reached a point. People, and, 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 and to, 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 to what was disappointing is that even young people are now saying to go to court is a waste of time. Okay, Senator, can you hear me, please? And by that statement, it's an indictment on the judiciary. Okay, Senator, can you, can you hear me, please, if you can? Uh, I'll come yes, back I to can. you. Yes, but you, 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 you're, you're highlighting judicial or inconsistencies in judgments um, uh, across board for the last election. I want to come to uh, Dr. Victor Kumba Pierce, who's a, a public affairs analyst with us here uh, in the studio. Dr. Pierce, your assessment uh, as far as uh, the performance of the judiciary in handling uh, the election petitions in the just concluded elections uh, are concerned. I have had uh, a lot of time to review this whole situation and I am of the opinion that the whole process is warped and it can never work. The judiciary should not be the arbiter or the final word on political elections. It is a reason they call the law, they say the law is an ass. The reason for that is the law takes so many things into consideration. If you kill somebody in broad daylight with a smoking gun in your hand and you go to court, the law may eventually say you did not commit murder because there's so many things that go into the consideration of the judiciary. We have made a very fundamental error in Nigeria in taking our election cases to court. The court is not the solution. It can never be. That is why the Honorable uh, Lawmaker is saying that uh, the judgment is never equal. In some cases, they decide on something. Other cases, they decide on something else. The problem is the judiciary should not, should not be saddled with determining election cases. That's the bottom line. So who should, who should determine election cases if not the judiciary? This is it. Pardon me if I say this. There is nothing we do in Nigeria that is not done elsewhere. What happened to election in Ghana, for instance? Why are they getting it right now more than they did before? Fundamentally, I tell you this. So long as the president, whoever he is or she is, is the one appointing the IMEC chairman in Nigeria, there can never be any credible election in this country. It is an anomaly. How can the man who is going to participate in the game also be the one that's appointing the empire, umpire? He who pays the piper calls the tune. This is what we've seen in Nigeria. The most criminal element in all our elections so far is the IMEC chairman. Right. And it is because of the system by which he's appointed. All right. He can never be just, and that is where the bottom line should be. He is the one that knows what happened on election day. He is the one that knows how the whole results came in. It is there. The buck must stop with INEC. But if you change the system, 
of our election, the structure of ANEC, we will never get it right. All right, I'll come back to that because uh, quite some talking points there, Dr. Pierce. Uh, uh, but uh, let's go over to uh, Falawi Roa Lukoa, member of the National Executive Council of the Nigeria Bar Association. Uh, uh, Mr. Ho, it could be argued, and some have argued actually, that um, the aggrieved parties in these uh, you know, election appeals, uh, those who lost, um, didn't present you know, evidence to prove their cases beyond reasonable doubt, and that if you go into the laws and into the books, you would see um, that they couldn't have possibly won at the court. What do you say to that? Uh, that's a fantastic question, um, and I think it, it's, it's, it's a good precedent, it's a good place to, to actually address a comment that uh, Dr. Pierce made. And uh, I, I, I disagree with him that a court will find somebody who, you know, committed murder, who shot somebody in broad daylight, and will hold that that person did not commit murder. You know, courts come to their decisions based on evidence presented to the court. And so you cannot do a real assessment or a real evaluation of a decision until one has looked at the case of the arguments made by all the parties involved. And so using that example, you know, um, in this instance, the court would not hold that there are so many other findings beyond just this person did not commit murder. You know, it could be that the prosecution would not prove its case beyond the reasonable doubt. And in criminal cases, the standard of proof is proof beyond the reasonable doubt. And there's a reason why, you know, that standard exists. In election petition matters, there's also a, a standard of proof that each party is expected to meet in order to get you know, whatever it is that they're asking for from the court. And uh, you, you, you tend to find in this part of the world, and not just in this part of the world, across the world generally, that whenever cases have to be decided by the court, there is always, you know, a litigation. One side that wins, and there's a side that loses. It's, it's a zero-sum game. So there's a win, there's a winner, and there's, there's a loser. And most times you find that the winner you know, of course, have the best things to say about the, 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 the decision. And the person who, the party who loses, always has, you know, the worst things to say. But at the end of the day, the question really is, what were the factors that the court had to evaluate in order to come to its, its decision? And so one cannot really do a very thorough assessment. And I'm saying this, you know, with the benefit of consideration. Uh, of looking at all the, all the different cases, you know, you cannot really um, analyze the cases without looking at the evidence that was presented by the parties. All right. You know, and so I would say that uh, the, 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 the fact that our elections uh, or the election results are actually being determined by the judiciary already shows that there is a failure in the process. And so it, it, it shows that there's a failure on the part of the executive. Of course, the, the act itself that is being used clearly did not meet right. the need of so, the So, we'll, to so we'll, we'll, we'll come to that at some point. Um, but, um, uh, Mr. Alokor, you're saying that uh, the judges couldn't do more than um, what they've done. It behoves on the, uh, the lawyers and the legal team of the, the aggrieved parties or the appellants to, to um, or the petitioners, sorry, to. Uh, to prove their cases beyond reasonable doubt. And, and this brings us to uh, the, the statement of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, um, Lord, the Honorable Justice Oluwa Kaede Aruola, uh, who um, said, you know, we need, to, we need to cut the umbilical cord of emotions and separate it from facts, you know, that we need to cut that cord of emotions versus facts, and that we cannot be moved by the mob. Um, I want to just take his quote, and I'll come to the senator before I go to back to uh, Dr. Pierce. Um, he, he, he made some statements recently, I think at the, um, uh, the, the, the end, ending of the legal year. Uh, so legal year. And, yes. and the commencement of the legal year. Commencement, sorry, and swearing in of new uh, um, uh, senior representatives of Nigeria. So this is what he said. Uh, we should never be overwhelmed by the actions or loud voices of the mob or crowd and now begin to confuse uh, law with sentiment or something else in deciding cases. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll come uh, back to you, uh, Senator Shehosani. 
the lawyer here has said that the law is the law. And if you don't have a good case, no matter how strongly people feel about it, I'm not quoting him now, just, you know, paraphrasing, that, that they can't give you more than what you present evidence for. Um, so what do you say to this? And to what uh, uh, Honorable Leonard CJN has said, separate emotions from facts don't allow the mob move you. Well, um, it's not to me. No, that's to Senator. It's not about uh, emotions or mob rule to stampede the courts to take a decision. But uh, time and again, we have seen where the courts contradicted itself on election petition matters. And uh, from the feelings of Nigerians, when, when they say justice should be done and should be seen to be done, well, justice is done, but seen to be done is another thing. Who is to see is the public? And the public has not seen justice in most of these election petition matters that are before uh, our courts. And I have always said it clearly. You see, justice uh, is made to serve the society, to serve the country, and to serve the system. And it should be justice according to the law. If justice is according to the law, there are consistency. But if justice is according to the judges, then they will say something today and tomorrow they will say another thing. You see, democracy cannot thrive. The country where the judiciary has lost respect in the eyes of its people. Uh, when people are afraid of committing offenses, it's because they believe that there is a justice system that will penalize them. And when people go to the court, it's in, on the belief that they will take justice. But when we create an atmosphere whereby uh, people can get justice, then people have to help themselves. And look at what has happened in Kogi, like you said. Salahuddin so Abdullah has organized a press conference and so he said he's not going to court. And those who went to court are even said to be wasting their time. Do you know what that means? It means that people have no hope in our justice system, have no hope in the judiciary. Now, for those people who are occupying the position of the bench, either at the tribunal, appeal, or Supreme Court level, they should know that their honor, their dignity, and their name in posterity is about doing justice, not about serving people in the political, uh, or the political office or political power. You have seen across the states, most of the judgment tends to the real party. Well, to me, this is a lesson to us politicians. Uh, because most times, elections were being modified on the ground of what happened either at the congresses or at the inter internal party issues. When it has been clearly stated that pre election matters have elapsed and issues that will be before the court are issues that borders on the elections. But see the contradictions that are happening. So as far as I'm concerned, I believe that if we want this democracy to survive, the judiciary has to work on. There are three other government, the executive, the legislative, and the judiciary. Already the judiciary, the executive, and the legislative have been perceived by the society as being corrupt and as being a drug pipe on the nation and as being unconscionable. But it has been said the judiciary is the last one of not just the problem of the nation. As we report now, the judiciary has been dragged into politics, judges have been dragged into politics, and judgments and rulings are becoming political okay. statements. All right. See what happened in Oshu, where even the word Buganda came inside a, a political judgment. See what happened in Cairo. The judgment that I believe I see is being written by someone who has never even gone to law school. Then you wonder, is this what democracy is 24 years after me to do? If we are not careful, we will 
upset this democracy. All right. Thank you, Senator. What's happening in West Africa today? Thank you, Senator. From uh, uh, giving yeah. to Gabo or from giving to Burkina Faso, Mali, Nigeria. All right. Th thank you, Senator. I'll overthrow those governments. It's all about elections. It's all about everything else. So we must be very careful. All right. And judiciary has to know that if this democracy is destroyed, they will be the first people to be at the receiving end of this. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Dr. Pierce. Uh, Senator Sani said that the, the court comes up with contradictions and things that you can explain. I think that we have overburdened our judiciary and we have placed them in a situation where they cannot win. Uh, Chief Justice said something in that same uh, uh, speech. Two things. He said the judiciary are only human, okay? They are only human. He also said that judiciary needs fiscal independence. In other words, the judiciary can be corrupted, the judiciary can be influenced, and this is why for a thing like politics which is so dynamic, we should not take it to the judiciary. Once we have gone past the tribunal stage, after all, the tribunal committee is also made up of, of, of lawyers. Once this case, a political case, has gone beyond the tribunal, that's where it should end. It should not go to appeal. This is not a business of the law. That's number one. Number two, when I said the smoking gun issue, this is what happens in the courts. Nothing is sacrosanct. You never know how it's going to go. Because the man that you saw making a shooting somebody and you saw the smoking gun may eventually be, be, be acquitted on the basis of insanity. That's the point I was making. So there is no guarantee. Now, what would you say? You say, my God, but we saw him, he shot somebody. It's obvious. <laughs> this is what happened. But when it gets to the law, another thing comes entirely. Let me give you an example what I suspect happened in this last election. Most people don't say it, but I know that in private discussions we've been saying it. Why did INEC announce the result of the election just after about 30% of the votes had been cast? What happened? Nobody has asked INEC what happened. Something drastic happened. I suspect that one of the presidential candidates' supporters have used AI, artificial intelligence, to intercept INEC, to go into the INEC server, and they have forged the results. And INEC panicked and announced the results. There's also something that you will notice. When the Labour Party went to court, the Supreme Court never really gave a judgment to the Labour Party. They just dismissed the case and said, look, we have dismissed PDP, and you will go along with PDP, your case is gone. Something is going on, and that is the nature of the law. Do you know that there's something beyond the law in the law? <laughs> it gets to a point when the judges say, look, this case, even though it should go this way, we cannot announce it to go this way because of maybe because of national security. Like the Canada uh, Utah. And so on and so forth. Therefore, what I'm saying is, my contribution to this whole discussion is, one, INEC will be totally revamped. There must be nothing like INEC German. In any federal structure, any federation in the world where we have a democracy, there is not this, the, the position of INEC German. One man appointed by one president to be in charge of the whole election of the whole country of 200 million people. No way. It will not work, it has not worked, and it will never work. Thank you, Mr. So Pierce. we must review that. Then we must also realize that election cases is political. It should not go to the courts. If it goes beyond the tribunal, it's getting into messing up a judiciary, burdening the judiciary, giving them what they cannot handle. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Pierce. Um, I come back to you, uh, our lawyer in the, on the program, uh, what's your take on, on this issue of emotion versus fact? Because, um, I mean, uh, well, a case in point, let's look at what's happening in parts of state where um, the People's Democratic Party uh, are saying, see, uh, any matter about the sponsorship of our candidate uh, or his um, 
uh, 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 yeah, sponsorship or nomination of our candidate by the party is a pre-election matter. We don't agree with the court that it should be a ground for um, uh, us to lose the election. But um, if we go to the Electoral Act and look at Section 134, which talks about grounds for petition, it's quite clear that uh, qualification you know, is, is a ground for petition. And he's not talking about the members of the party. I don't expect a member of your party to take his candidate to court. Um, so you expect that the party should understand it. So what are your thoughts on, on what the Chief Justice uh, of Nigeria said? Falaro. I, I, I think the Chief Justice on that point is, is very correct. And I, I agree with him in the sense that the, the courts can not look at extraneous matter and come to its decisions. In other words, the court must make a decision and must come to its decision on an evaluation of the facts before it. However, in my opinion, I think it is very important for the court to also be guided by what we call public policy. And this is because the, the, the judiciary or the strength of the judiciary really lies in the trust in, that the public reposes in the judiciary. Section 6 sub 6b of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999, as amended, situates the courts or gives the courts the power to determine disputes between the federal government, the state governments, and, and between individuals. You know, and so the court has this very unique and distinct function. And as such, it's important that the court must the, 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 the court must do its best to uh, as a judiciary to maintain the trust reposed by the public. And you know, the tribunals are actually manned by judges. The tribunals are constituted by judges, and there must be a process uh, through which these petitions must have a, an ultimate stop. But again, I, I'll take it back to this question of, of, of uh, electing or getting our leaders by the courts. It's one that always raises emotional uh, emotional it, it gets emotional reactions the 2020 election in the united states of america for example and uh, that's the, the one between uh, president donald trump and president biden really said what well, was a very emotional uh, well, the outcome of the election was very emotional that led to what we may even consider to be an uprising you know on, on the 6th of january 2020 uh, 2021 uh, and so you, you find that there are Emotions often follow political decisions, but in my opinion, I, I think that there's a conversation that we should be having about the judiciary and about all other arms of government, particularly with regards to uh, rebuilding public confidence in these institutions. There, there is definitely a, a, a lack of public confidence in the executive and the legislature. And as a Senate, Senator uh, Stanley said, I, and, I, and I, I do agree to a very large extent that the judiciary has to be very conscious of the pulse of the public. And this is because the judiciary's power actually derives from the public, from the, the trust. Are, are you saying they should be emotional? Because if you are uh, saying they should be all the pulse of the public, then you want emotions and some sort of no, sentimental no, 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 no. consideration it, it, to emotions, come. In, emotion should not, should, not bear, it should not come to bear in the decision that the judiciary makes. Well, when I'm talking about justice, you know, justice, Justice Okuta, late Justice Okuta, uh, defined justice as a three-way street. Justice for the community, justice for the petitioner, and justice for the person, the defendant. You know, and in, in terms of the perception of justice, there's the perception, and then there's, you know, actual justice. So the perception is always is equally as important as doing justice. So, so are we not therefore, mm -hmm. therefore you know, shifting a bit towards uh, uh, emotions and sentimental uh, consideration, feelings, perception, perception still an emotional thing? Well, there, 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 there is a place for justice to be seen to be done. And even though the feelings will always be involved, the, the, the legal process that we use today is adversarial in nature. And what that means is there must be a winner and there must be a loser. And so the winners will always say, you know, the court did very well. At the end of, you know, when judgment is given, the loser will, will say, oh, you know, the decision was, was, was a wrong one. And so there will always be an emotional outcome. But what is very important is that 
the, the both both the winner and the loser must agree or must be able to look at the process and agree that the process by which the decision emerged was fair and just to all. All right. Parties. Thank and you I very much. Follow up. The, I'm so sorry to interrupt you at this point. Let's just take a quick break. When we come back, we we'll continue with our discussion. Welcome back uh, tonight. Our guest, uh, Senator Shea Sani, former lawmaker, uh, Dr. Dick Tukumbo Pierce, uh, convener, reset legals, PDP, public affairs analyst, and Falari Waluko, a member of the National Executive Committee or Council of the Nigerian Bar Association, uh, all our guests tonight. As we, you know, asking, uh, does the judiciary need salvation? Who will judge the uh, justices or the judiciary? Well, um, Senator, uh, back to you. Um, I'd like to find out and take, uh, you know, know, what's your take on, uh, you a politician, what's your take on politicians uh, who have been thrust into the limelight with their comments on uh, election cases and the influence they wield on judges? We're talking uh, Senator Damo Mohamed Chihuahu on his last day, uh, representing Bauchi North Central District, thanked his wife, Justice Zainab Adamu Bokachua, who had a six-year stint as the president of the Court of Appeal, and also reminded some of his fellow senators, his colleagues, that his wife had assisted them in their cases. We're talking about member of the House of Representatives, Yusuf uh, Gakti, and his controversial statement, quote, at the Supreme Court, we will know who they know, and they will know who we know, end of quote. We're talking about, you know, an audio clip that has been making the rounds allegedly regarding the Delta State Governorship Election Petition and Appeals, where one party seems to be boasting of the influence that they have within the corridors of justice. Let's take a listen. to provide some more context. So what, what are your thoughts on, on how politicians boast of uh, the influence they wield on, on the judiciary? You heard him saying, you know, that they, they have a certain, uh, you know, a certain level of the, the courts, you know, in their pockets. Sir. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please go on. Hello? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, it's unfortunate that this is the image and the reputation of our judiciary. 
Um, from the statements of uh, some personalities in this country in the last few years, that was summed up by the presidential candidate of the PDP that called the judiciary a cash and carry entity. It's sad that uh, a temple of justice has been degraded uh, to that level. You see, we are, we are reaching a point where people are believing that as long as any issue is before the court, if you have your money when election matters is concerned, you will get your judgment as you fit, as them fit for you. Now, if this is what judiciary has turned into, we know that Nigeria is doomed. If you read the statement attributed to uh, Honorable Dogwa, where he said that election is not simply about votes. And if you also tally in with what Gagdi said, uh, the Honorable Member from, uh, from Plateau State, when he was making reference to uh, who they know, and he then put it also in line with that of uh, the former senator from uh, Bauchi State. Uh, you see that um, it's all evident that uh, justice uh, has become a commodity. And if that is the case, uh, people will not waste their time campaigning for election or seeking policy. All you need to do is simply to register and participate in the process. Whether you win or you don't, you will be we out of time, so I want to just go to it. And I want to get snatch the seat from any other person who uh, wins it. So to me, this statement is an indication of the danger Nigeria has found itself. And the democracy needs to be rescued by rescuing our judicial system. Uh, look at the statement attributed to Yeah, distinguished. Uh, please, uh, please, I don't know if you heard me before, but I, I want to just briefly take the thought of the other guests because we're pressed uh, for time. I'm sorry about that. Uh, um, but but you, you've said quite a lot. I don't know what uh, Dr. Pierce has to say in addition to what uh, uh, Senator has said. It's quite a challenging situation we keep hearing. And I'm happy you talked about uh, uh, Dobua. Dr. Pierce. Everything you said there was around one issue. The system is broken in every way possible. Until we restructure Nigeria, both uh, the political system, the judiciary, everything has to be rearranged. Imagine the reference that the lawyer made to America the last election between Biden and Trump. Imagine if the system was such that a President Trump is the one that appointed one IMF chairman in America. Trump could have simply instructed that chairman, as Buhari did in 2019, don't announce this result. Announce that I won. That's the end of it. So until we change the system, we can never have the proper results. Okay. The judiciary, the, the, chairman, the, the chief judge said, our people in the judiciary are only human. Secondly, we don't have fiscal independence. That tells you that the judiciary is really amenable to being bribed, to being coerced, to being made to give justice the way people want. All right, Dr. Pierce, thank you. Uh, for now, uh, over to you. Um, what do you think the solution is? You know, is it you know to amend the constitution? Because we've seen cases where state governors have had to battle their chief justices because they perceive that their justices have them. Um, uh, on the influence from their political rivals. So they try to remove them, you know, or they try to shut down the courts. So you have the case of Rotimi Amici versus uh, Justice Jay-Z Okocha. We have Governor Ademola Adelike of Oshun State versus um, uh, Justice Oyebola or So is it an amendment of the, the, the uh, constitution, you know, to ensure that the, you, can't, you can't just, you know, remove a just judge or, you know, you look at the process of appointment and promotion of judges? A fantastic question. I, I think there's there's a lot to be said about reforming our system, and um, I will say very quickly about that audio clip that I will not be you know not we shouldn't we should take it with a pinch of salt to the extent that it is common for politicians to do what politicians do, you know. But I think at the end of the day, 
uh, a judiciary has to be insulated from the vagaries of politics and of politicians because it's easy for a politician to say, oh, we have this court, we have that court. You know, and I've, I've seen situations where people make such boosts and you, you put them to the test and they're unable to substantiate their claims. You know, so I, I would say to a very large extent that the independence of the judiciary is a, is a very important conversation that we should have as a constitutional issue. And that independence has to do with fiscal independence. But the judiciary is also an arm of government that must be held accountable because of, of all the three arms of government that we have, the judiciary is the only arm that is not elected. All right. You know, and that arm must be held accountable. But before we talk about accountability, or as we are, as we are talking about accountability, there must also be independence, and that includes fiscal independence as well. All right. Gentlemen, uh, I'm afraid this very, very interesting conversation has come to an end because uh, of the want of time. Senator Sheer Sani, former lawmaker, thank you so much for your time. Dr. Adeto Kumbo Pierce, uh, convener of reset, Lagos PDP, public affairs analyst, thank you for your time. For Mario Aluko, a lawyer, member, and national executive counsel of the Nigeria Bar Association, it's been a pleasure having you all on Politics HQ.